Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and welcome to What The Math. In this video we're going to try to talk about a very very common question that I get on this channel and this is basically in regards to the rings around different planets. Many people have been asking me to talk about why uh, planets like Saturn seem to have rings but other planets do not have rings, or do they? We're going to find out this in this video and if you still haven't subscribed, click that subscribe button right now. Welcome to What The Math. All right, so here we are in uh, the ring system of Saturn. This is in Space Engine, of course. And if I actually slow this down to the point where you can kind of see what's happening, um, you will be able to kind of even see the little particles orbiting around Saturn because that's essentially its rings. Now, here is one. Oh, here we go. You can kind of see the tiny, tiny particles. Now, um, what you may not be aware of is, uh, of course, that every single gas giant in our solar system has a ring system. It just, the, the biggest one is around Saturn, and this is why this is stereotypically known as the ring planet, even though other planets do have them as well, and I'll show it to you in a second. Before we go, though, let's actually, uh, let me just quickly tell you about these rings in particular. So, very recently, um, specifically after the Cassini mission, we've discovered that these rings are actually ancient. We, we used to think that there might be new, there might have been, you know, formed in the last few million years, but um, even though they actually are new particles, it's because they actually collide with each other and they reform every single second. So all of these particles are new, but the actual ring system has been around Saturn since the beginning of the solar system. So these are absolutely ancient. Anyway, so um, we now are going to escape and uh, take a look at other rings as well. Let's start with the first uh, one around Jupiter. Now, just to kind of start answering the question about why is it that, you know, other planets don't seem to have rings. Well, yes, gas giants do have them and you can kind of see the very, very vaguely, obscurely visible ring system that I'm trying to slowly approach so you can actually see it. So, yes, other gas giants have them as well, uh, but the terrestrial planets don't. And the reason for this is because of two things, really. One is that for a ring system to form, which you can kind of see now, hopefully. I don't know if you can, but it's right there. It's very barely visible. Um, so for rings to form, first of all, they have to be uh, a little bit farther away from the sun. The terrestrial planets are close enough for all of this gassy stuff, which actually basically is things like tiny, tiny rocks and pebbles and dust, but also things like ices, water ices and uh, organic ices, um, for them to be basically, you know, here. Oh, hey, this is more visible if I actually turn around. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Uh, so for this to actually be in this region, it has to be a lot farther away from the sun. So the sun that's right there has quite a lot of power. It actually um, can easily push away particles away from a planet, which it often does in cases of, you know, Earth and um, Venus. Uh, like, for example, Venus is constantly losing its carbon dioxide that is basically being ejected by the sun, and then the solar winds take it away farther into the solar system. So even if there were rings around Venus and Mercury in the past, they were blown away by the sun a long time ago. But uh, Saturn and Jupiter are far, far enough that they can easily maintain this. So that's the first reason. And the second reason has has to do with density. Uh, Jupiter, Saturn, and other gas giants, they're not very dense. And we're actually going to go check out the other gas giants, starting with Uranus. Um, they're not very dense, and uh, our planet Earth is very dense. It's uh, as, as much as five or six times more dense than, uh, than most of these gas giants. And uh, because of this density, um, the so-called Roche limit, about which I've previously talked in the past, but I'm going to also talk about in one of the future videos, um, is basically responsible for um, for creating these rings. And the rings around Uranus are really difficult to find. There they are, actually. I think I finally found them. They're very, very tiny. There are, I believe, uh, 13 of them. Um, and they are very, very dark, which is why it's so difficult to see them. Uh, so there is one of them. I'm going to try to approach it. Um, so the Roche limit is actually responsible for um, for forming these rings and for basically maintaining them. Uh, Roche limit refers to the fact that if you approach a planet relatively close and you're a smaller object that's a little bit less dense than this uh, planet, uh, you will fall apart and you will turn into dust. 
And this is actually what's going to happen to Phobos in the future. When it approaches Mars, it is going to at some point fall apart and become uh, a ring. So Mars will eventually have a ring system and it will um, obviously have it for quite a long time until Sun blows it away again. Uh, now, let's actually take a look at Phobos really quickly in case you have no idea what I'm talking about. And so this is Phobos. This is one of the moons of Mars. Uh, I'm going to zoom away from it for a second just to show you how close it is to Mars currently. So here is the orbit of Phobos around Mars. And so in the next uh, few million years, it's going to approach close enough to Mars that it's actually going to fall apart and become a ring system. And so Mars will have rings in the future. And it did have them in the past because we now are kind of almost positive that both, uh, both Phobos and Deimos, the two moons of Mars, were actually formed uh, from a collision with a very large object. Uh, when uh, a large object collided with Mars. And this is actually how Earth was formed, uh, how Moon was formed as well around Earth. And uh, when this happened, there actually was a very large ring system around Mars and also around Earth when Earth received the collision from so called Theia. So um, it's very likely that both Mars and Earth did have rings in the past, but with time they disappeared, either, you know, falling back into the planet or turning into these two beautiful moons. So the moon known as Phobos and the other moon known as Deimos, which is right here. Um, and uh, so, yeah, and the rest of the dust was blown away by the sun into the outer solar system. All right, so that's essentially the one of the main reasons why there are no actual rings systems around the inner planets anymore. And so it's very possible that there were some before, but they're now uh, gone because of the sun action on them. And let's actually take a look at the last ring system around Neptune. Now, um, the third, I guess, reason is because of the origin of these rings. So many of these rings have a very, very unique origin. And it's actually um, very different depending on the planet that you visit. So uh, in, in case of uh, both Neptune and Uranus, and this is, uh, this is, of course, Neptune, we have actually no idea just yet why there are rings here. These rings are very, very different from the rings of Saturn and Jupiter. As a matter of fact, they're almost entirely different. They're very dark. They contain mostly organic materials uh, and a little bit of dust here on Neptune. Um, Uranus doesn't actually have any dust. It's mostly organic materials. And this is basically things like sooth. So, you know, ashy, dark looking material that's just kind of orbiting around these planets. And uh, it could have come from pretty much anywhere. It could have been a collision. It could have been maybe some kind of an eruption um, on one of these moons that orbit around Neptune and Uranus. But we don't really know just yet. We do know where other rings came from, though. So, for example, in case of Jupiter, we are kind of positive that most of these rings came from uh, collisions with moons of Jupiter. So, for example, there is a moon right here called Thebe. And so when this moon received a collision, some of its dust escaped and created a ring that is very close to it now and it orbits in the same sort of orbital parameters. Same thing happened to the other rings. And some of these rings were formed from volcanism. And this is actually more common with, um, with Saturn. So Saturn has a very, very wide variety of rings. So inner rings here are made out of ice. And this is actually um, a very likely has been here forever because this would have become a moon. But because it's within the Roche limit, it never really had enough sort of opportunity to, to become a moon. And so it remained as ices. Some of these other rings were formed a little bit differently. Specifically, there's actually rings that you don't even see here. And some of those rings were also formed from collisions with the moons, but the majority of them were formed from the uh, volcanism from various moons around Saturn, specifically cryovolcanism. So basically um, volcanic eruptions of ices and uh, water ice. And the most famous ring for that is also known as E-ring. E-ring was actually formed entirely from uh, volcanic eruptions uh, from one of the moons, and I believe it's... It is the moon right here called Enceladus. Now, unfortunately, you don't really see the ring in the game because it hasn't really been added yet, but there is a very, very large, although not very visible because it's kind of thin ring that goes right here. And this is called um, the E-ring. And it's formed by the eruptions, the cryo eruptions, the ice eruptions of this beautiful icy looking uh, moon, which is uh, something we've talked about previously. And it's a pretty awesome place that has 
really, really large uh, liquid ocean underneath. And so that's essentially how many of these rings were formed. But what you may not be aware of is that there's actually other ring systems around other objects as well. So this is, for example, another um, Saturn uh, moon called Rhea. And uh, Cassini mission suggested that maybe there is also a ring system here that we don't really see. Because of the uh, distribution of magnetic field around this particular moon, there seems to be some kind of an invisible formation that may suggest a ring system. Now, whether it's a ring system or something else, we might discover sometime in the future, but it's possible for moons to have rings as well. Um, obviously, from different types of collisions or possibly from um, volcanic eruptions as well. But uh, we know for a fact that there's at least one asteroid that has a ring system as well. And this asteroid is known as Chiriklo. It's about 300-ish uh, kilometers in, um, in diameter. And you can actually see this ring system right here. So Chiriklo is uh, a very well-known example of ring systems that are outside of the planetary system. So there it is. There's actually two of them. And they actually even have unofficial names. They're named after the rivers in Brazil. And I'm going to mispronounce it for sure, but uh, I believe uh, this one is called... We are Poke, and I think this one is called Chewy, and I'm sure this is not how you pronounce it in, in Brazilian Portuguese. Anyway, so that's essentially uh, the uh, the rings, the ring systems, and origin of, of the rings. And you can probably guess that these two ring systems were formed from some sort of a large collision with this uh, flattened but beautiful asteroid called Chariklo. And uh, it's very likely that many other objects, including asteroids and including moons, may actually have various ring systems around them. And so now hopefully you know a little bit more about rings and how they're formed and um, why inner planets don't seem to have them. And so once again, it's really because they're kind of close to the sun and because they used to have rings, but they just don't have them anymore. There was actually an exoplanet I've talked about previously that seems to have the largest ring system in the solar system. And you can check out that video as well. It's available in the card thingy that you see on the screen right now. And anyway, so thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share this video with your friends. And also check out some of the other space videos I've made previously. If you know of any other cool objects that have rings around them, please post it in the comments below so I can take a look at it in one of the future videos. And meanwhile, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching and bye-bye.